Today on In Her Words, we're sitting down with actress Alana Ubach. You will know her from Legally Blonde, Euphoria, and so many things in between. She has the most amazing story of her immigrant parents and their love of the stage, their love of movies, and she is just a delight. We had so much fun talking and getting to know each other, and we know you will too. Enjoy. Hi, Gretchen. Right, Alana, thank you so, so much for joining us. Well, today. thank you we're for inviting me. This is a pleasure. You. Do you, uh, do you like the podcast world? How have you uh, jumped in with both feet these last couple of years? I have the gift of gab. I do not <laughs> shut up. I absolutely love meeting new people. So yes, podcasts are my jam. I love them. I swear, I, I think I missed the, I'm a little too old for the, I go to YouTube for everything I need right. to know. I, but I did not miss the, I go to podcasts for everything I need well, to know. I love it. It reminds me of, of you know, radio days, right? When right? you would like listen to a couple sit and have brunch and talk politics <laughs> or talk about what they were eating. And it, it's just, I, it does kind of bring me back to that. I, although obviously I, I, I was born in 1975. I would say you're not in the but, great days of radio either, but, but I, 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 <laughs> I do love the old. It does have an old school aspect to it. So um, I think it's it's just so much fun. So for our audience, we have our audience at, at Women in Entertainment is made up of, um, you know, so many young men and women, mostly women, but coming up and, you know, getting, getting started in their careers, changing careers. So what we love to do is hear, kind of hear your story. How did, uh, how did you get started? Did you come from a family of creatives? Did you know you always wanted to be in front of where it, it, it's funny because we always say, Oh, no one's story's linear. There are a few, there sure. are, there are all there's baby directors walking around, <laughs> but, uh, but we'd love to hear your story of, of how did you, uh, how did you know you wanted to be in front of the camera and, and who helped you along that journey? Well, my mother and father, they were not exactly creatives, but probably two of the most enthusiastic audience members you've ever met. They were the people that were would make comments while watching movies and we'd almost get kicked out of the movie theater because my mom was so loud. Oh my God, she left him for the hooker. <laughs> I mean, things like, so they were so enthusiastic. And then I would sit in the back seat and they would be discussing the movie together mm -hmm. while my mom was in the passenger seat. My dad was driving us home and they discussed discuss that movie the whole way back, whether it was a movie or a play, any kind of show. My dad loved to gamble. <clears throat> and so every weekend, you know, not every weekend, but you know, back then you had flights from Vegas to LA leaving like every hour, right? right? right. And, and so uh, Eastern Airlines, remember Eastern <laughs> Airlines, right? And so we would, we would jump on a plane and, and fly out. And my dad would put, you know, would put us up at the Hilton or wherever. And if he did really well at the craps table, he would say, okay, I made a, uh, enough money to slip the major D a $100 bill. We're going to see the captain and Tanil. <laughs> and so we would... We, he slipped the Mater D a $100 bill and the Mater D would give us like the best seat in the house. And we were sitting there with our dinner theater, I mean, dinner, uh, you know, at the dinner table, eating prime rib and enjoying Captain and Tennille. And I thought oh to my myself, God, I love that. I, you know, I asked my mom and dad, I said, but mom, dad, I, you know, I was like three and four. I said, do they go to the bathroom, those people up there? And he's my mom was like, what kind of a stupid question is that? Of course they go to the bathroom a lot. Of, yes, they go caca and pee pee and, and they, they rehearse every day and they work very hard up there. Those are real people. What, you think they were dolls? I said, yes, I couldn't comprehend the, 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 just the, um, the sheer joy that they were, that they were feeling up there this mm -hmm. this that, that they exuded all of this this incredible just they they were they loved what they did and it was infectious at least to me it really had a profound effect on me when i was uh -huh. a kid and i thought i i want to do this and i want to i want to i don't know what i want but i want to be you know the lights or you know that smell of prime rib and cigarette smoke i just wanted <laughs> to be a part of that action it seemed so cool to me. My mom and dad took me to, to there was La Caja Fall, 
uh-huh. was open on La Cienega Boulevard, you know, way back when. And, right. Um, and they just loved seeing shows and they take me to every single show. I love that. I Whatever mean, you, it was. And, yeah, your young age taking you to that. That's amazing. And I was a little girl and I thought, oh my gosh. And, and, uh, I want to be, I want to be a drag queen, but I grow up, I want that. They were just so clever to me and sarcastic and quick and smart as whips. And they always had a really great retort to someone in the audience and they were confident and beautiful. And I thought, wow, I, I, I've got to, I've got to be on the stage. I, I want to do this. And so when, um, when I was old enough, I was sort of growing out of ballet classes. You know, I knew I was, I was just too short to, to, you know, really take ballet seriously. And I knew it was just such a hard, it would be such a hard uh, livelihood. Mm-hmm. And I said to my mom, I said, I really, I really want to, uh, I really want to act. I want, I want to do this for real. And so there was an ad in, in the paper for uh, the young people's program at the Lee Strasberg Institute. Mm -hmm. And so I enrolled when I was 10 and I was there for uh, years and years and years just studying. And then when I was about 13, 14, I went on a couple of, you know, auditions here and there because at Strasberg, they had agents, you know, in the audience watching these shows that we'd put on every 12 weeks. So I, I, uh, someone, uh, I think one of Natalie Ross and she was a uh, children's agent. One of Natalie Rawson's assistant assistants was in the audience and then approached me and, and gave me, you know, her phone number. And I, I went back home and I said, mom, dad, we have to call these people and, and I need an agent. <laughs> we and got I, it. Oh, we got it. It happened. We got it. We got it. And it's so funny because my mother and father were very, you know, they were immigrants. So they thought, Oh, okay. Well, if this is what you do want to do, well, you're going to do it and you're, you're going to work as hard as you possibly can. And, and, um, it's not impossible because we live in Los Angeles. I lived in Downey, so it wasn't impossible right. for me to, right. you know, and, and back then you didn't, you never put yourself on tape. Um, you know, you had to see these people in, in person. And so, um, you know, they had a business. So sometimes, you know, if, if it was after school and I had an audition, they'd like, Say just call a cab company and <laughs> take a cab to these freaking auditions. So it was like a little kid taking cabs to auditions. It was, it was oh you know, God. really I funny. It. I love it. And and I never booked anything really substantial until I was about 15, 16. And it was the Beekman's World Science uh program. And I had such a blast on that. And then and then it sort of, you know, after after that it was um I did theater in New York at, uh, you know, off Broadway when I was uh-huh. a kid. And then, uh-huh. and then I just started working. But, um, I think once I got my driver's license, that's when I had all, I, I felt like I had so much freedom and independence and maybe it, it really showed in my reads. And, uh, so there's that. Um, but you know, everyone has a, their, their uh, um, a different road and I think it's fascinating, isn't it? I think you're the first person that has ever attributed your career to Captain and Sunil on our, uh, <laughs> On our podcast. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, that 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 ages me. Good old Captain and Tennille. <laughs> and in Vegas too, because the oh, variety yeah. show that was a whole different. Uh, that was a whole different. I think we have had a Sunny and Cher on, uh, you know, conversation before, but Captain oh, yeah. Tennille was uh, amazing. Sure. Um, with doing doing live theater and then obviously television and movies that we, you know that we know you so well from and we'll we'll talk about that specifically do you do you have a favorite do you there's do there's you... nothing more incredible nothing more gratifying than live than really? live performing oh performing live to me is is um really there's nothing like it uh-huh. i feel like i'm just floating in, in, in a cloud when I'm on stage. I love it so, so, so much. And unfortunately in Los Angeles, you know, I live here, so there aren't, you know, parts in theater, very few and far between. And so I had to learn to sort of really, really bring my tone myself down Mm. because I was getting feedback that I was really over the top. Of, of course I was over the top from the theater. So, you know, um, broad for me comes very naturally. Mm-hmm. Is, the, is the only way I can explain it. And sometimes I see, you know, child actors, you know, actors playing my kids or whoever, and and they're just so minimal. 
and it's so natural. They just are who they are. And I, I think there's something really interesting about that. But, you know, I thought to myself when I was a kid, you know, I, I don't want to be an actor because I want to play myself. That's just, that's so weird. It's just so weird. Why would you want right. to be yourself when there are so many other people to, to taste and choose from and, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and live in. And so, so it, for, to be a character actor really was my, my, my jam, as I say. I it sounds like there was a great benefit to, to being in LA, we have, you know, you sure. hear so many stories of, you know, Broadway or trying to be on stage, trying to be on stage. And then what an effort it was to, ha you know, to try to get to LA or try to move to LA. And, and you, I, I hear kind of seamlessly moving through, you know, TV auditions, movie auditions, live sure. theater auditions and how, yeah. yeah. And to me, you know, sitcoms were really big yeah. in the late 80s, early 90s. And so I was always going out for like the funny friend, right? Uh -huh. Six in Blossom, you know, with Jenna Van Oye. I remember yeah. I, I I think I tested for, for Blossom. If I'm, was I, did I test? I don't, I don't think, you know, but there was, there were so many, you know, pilots and stuff that I started doing and it, you, you never really know what it leads to. And my, my, my whole thing is you have to say yes to everything. So I was saying yes to AFI films, USC films, you know, whatever I could just to get my feet wet, you uh -huh. know, just to know what it was like to be on a set and have that and, and, and to test and to really practice patience and just, you know, being still and, and um, being in the moment that it really just takes thousands and thousands of hours to master being private and public. And it didn't really click for me until I was about 26. So it, it took years for me to really understand what, you, you know, everyone's like, oh, they're so method because they're always in character. That's not what the method is at all. <laughs> but it really, it, but, but, you know, sense memory and, and, and personalizations and all of that mm -hmm. weren't really, I didn't really get it. It didn't really click until until I joined um, Sharon Chatton's class. And once I was in her class, she always says, she was like, give me six months, it's gonna click once. And she was, you know, very, um, she was, came from the actor studio philosophy. Mm -hmm. And so it was all about, you know, uh, uh, relaxation and sensory work. And it, and it worked for me. It doesn't work for a lot of people, but I, I tried Meisner, I, I, I was so bored in that class and, and Stella Adler, the imagination. I'm like, eh, I've been through uh, so much crap in my life. I, I don't need an imagination. I'll just use whatever, <laughs> all the, all the stuff like that. I've been through. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, that really is, you, you have to, you have to have, I, I found myself not really getting interesting roles until mm -hmm. um, I, I started going through, uh, you know, really, really heavy stuff in, in my personal life. It really did it make a for in what you bring absolutely, to it. Yeah. absolutely yeah. what you bring do you to it. Still, does. Do you still find that little girl joy in your roles that always. when you're, when you're auditioning and when you're getting roles, do oh. you still feel that? Always. I mean, I, I always say I, I never strive to be like the best actress in the world, <laughs> but I'll be damned if I'm not going to be the most enthusiastic because to me, that is, it's, it's, it's the, the, um, just exuberance when you're during storytelling, you're just telling a story and you're, and you're representing this little piece of humanity that is going to really, right. really, truly affect someone for a couple of hours and maybe change their lives. You know, I really do think that, 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 oh, you know, film and television plays. Yeah, movie going and, and there's the most transcendent thing that, that you can do, the true, the true escape. Um, do you, what other pieces of, of, of movie making or creative are you interested in? Are, is, you know, with writing, directing, producing, you know, all of those are, are there pieces that you're, that you want to, that you're doing now and that you want to grow into? Yes, I have been working on something and it's very exciting. Unfortunately, I can't really talk about it. <laughs> I, I asked what I could talk about and what I couldn't talk about. <laughs> like, no, 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 you can't make it yet. But, uh. I, uh, you know, to me, silly, goofy, just sort of just comes. I love 
kooky. I -hmm. love silly. I love oddball, you know, anything that's, that's just out of the ordinary and, and outrageous is something that I just gravitate toward. I love that. I just eat it up. When I was a kid, I remember watching Young Frankenstein and, <laughs> and Cloris Leachman's role in that and, 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 and seeing um, Marty Feldman do these characters. I thought, oh, my God. Oh, my right, God. Right. What I is were, that? I bet you were a Carol Burnett fan. Uh, oh, she her, was phenomenal. The facial, yeah, yeah, her. her. And I, it just phenomenal when she, when Burt Reynolds comes on the show and then she, <laughs> she, she hugs and then pretends to faint and falls flat on the floor. And, she, and she's, she was so gangly. She was just like this really beautiful insect <laughs> and, 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 and really awesome, beautiful uh, couture. And so there was, a, there was, a, there was a glamour to her as well, but you know, I, I, I and then I, I, having immigrant parents they allowed me to rent anything at the video store <laughs> so my dad would like be waiting in his toyota camry smoking a cigarette and he was like yeah go rent something you know something that uh just but uh, but hurry up because i want a frozen yogurt so i'd go in and I'd, I'd come back with like you know shoot the moon and a fish called wanda and sit and nancy and i spit on your grave <laughs> <laughs> And showing it, my dad was like, what is this? I spit on you. Great. Oh, she's very angry. Okay. <laughs> and I mean, but they would not say, this is absolutely, absolutely not Alana. I mean, you're nine years old. But I'd sit there and I'd watch yeah, one movie it. after another, after another. And my dad would be like falling asleep on the couch while my mom was in the, in the kitchen cooking dinner. And, I, you know, they just allowed me to watch it. It's funny. But I, I think I wasn't really affected by these R-rated movies or anything because I was so aware of the fact that it was all make-believe. Make right. I you lived in Los that. Angeles. So, yeah. you know, it's like the first theme park was it was Disneyland and then it was Universal Studios. Right, and, right. You, know, you had the perspective that, yeah, that so many people don't have. Absolutely. That shark was mechanical. It was all metal. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it at the tram. I could touch it. <laughs> right. He's not going to bite your butt while you're sitting on the toilet. That's impossible. <laughs> um, they couldn't even get it to work. So, <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I was really aware of that, but um, I wanted to be a horror film director uh, mm -hmm. before going to uh, USC. Mm -hmm. I, I did this whole thesis on when a stranger calls. I just loved um I love suspense thrillers. I still do. I oh my gosh! I mean, really? It, You're so I am all, I'm <laughs> all about my suspense thrillers. Oh boy, um, it, it's just fun storytelling. And um, I was at USC for maybe five minutes, and my dad talked me out of it because it was you know it was so expensive. Right. And he was like, "Look, you know what you want to do? Just ask a lot of questions." <laughs> that was it. <laughs> So it was like music to my ears. It was the best education. It was the best education, but but he was but it was say yes to everything. Mm -hmm. Don't be picky with the stuff you're in. Just do it. Just do it. It doesn't matter if you. It's none of your business whether it is good or bad. Say yes to it, and and it's and it's interesting. I learned so much mm -hmm. by doing these small little indies where I'd get paid maybe $200 to, to do them. But I think it was just the discipline of having to get up early in the morning mm -hmm. and take a quick shower and, and, and go to these sets and, and work with really difficult people and get how to get along with them and mm -hmm. how to get along with, with all of these different personalities that were clashing and everything. And, oh my gosh, these, you know, driving myself home at like four o'clock in the morning and, you know, getting pulled over by a cop because he's like, what's this girl doing at four o'clock in the morning driving on the streets? You know, it can't be good. It can't, it can't be good. Be good. <laughs> I have all this weird makeup on me. I was like, absolutely. I am. I am sober, man. I'm coming from a shoot. And um, that happened to me so many times. But it, 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 it really was. I, I just had so much, um, I don't know, uh, enthusiasm for, for mm -hmm. all of it. Even even the most difficult projects were were exciting to me, and uh, you know it's you know when people when I see kids that are sometimes like I'm not going to do that or that's beneath me or this nothing is beneath you. 
right right it's well and I, when i look you. back at all of the things that you've done and you're doing i mean how many people can say that that you know everything from uh, legally blonde to euphoria to you know to coco to i mean you really have done do you do you have do you have a favorite do you have a uh, a favorite role or a favorite even experience that's really stood out to you i it it always you know it's it's so it's so weird maybe i'm a masochist but my favorite part is you know being put through the ringer before i get hired oh. like oh it's between you and someone else and they just don't think you look enough like so and so and i'm like uh huh oh i'll <laughs> show you <laughs> you know and and and, and how to it, it's it's almost like my job almost feels like it's over by the time I get hired. It's okay. just like, okay, okay. I've done it so many times. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but, uh, that, that really is the fun part. And then, you know, by, by the time you're doing it, it it's, it, it's just absolutely, you know, second nature and it, it and it's, it's, uh, really easy, but, um, but I, as I've gotten older, it's harder to uh, memorize things. I've, I've noticed. I'm just like, oh boy, I'm not 34 anymore. <laughs> yeah. You've you've talked a, a lot about um, about Coco and and playing Mama and Melda and how important that was in your in your parents. Are you do you look for more roles that that have pieces of uh, you know your 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 real life in them now or pieces that kind of mean something you know to your heart as like that one did well i'm i'm i i feel like one of the luckiest uh actors because i've been with the same manager since i was 15. oh oh my margaret god margaret pollock yes she was working at strasburg i had met her when she was a teacher and then okay. she and then she opened up her own um management company and she started oh. managing a lot of her actress girlfriends and I, uh, my mom and dad were just so sick and tired of taking me to auditions and schlepping me all over the place. They were like, my dad asked her, she, he said, would, would you want to manage my kid? And Margaret really believed in me. Mm. And she had such incredible taste when it came to art, when it mm. came to watching a performance or she, she had this ability to say, I, I don't know. I think I think Meryl was just doing something really weird with her, with her hands the whole time, and it was a it was sort of a nervous thing. And I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I, I believe that. I mean, she was she's just she's picky mm -hmm. and and very tough on on on. She's not a yes man. Mm -hmm. It's she's not a yes person. It's you know if if um if I put myself on tape and she watches it, she's like, oh, Alana, I did not believe absolutely what what were you doing come on go back. <laughs> and even still to this day and i i trust when she's you know looking at the breakdowns of this that and the other you know what um what she you know any any time she she um shows me something she was like okay i read the script i i, I think you i think it's it's great for you i just trust her i just absolutely i just trust her with everything i'm like all right Yes, yes, this is fantastic. Or if she mm -hmm. thinks, oh, Alana, you don't want to do something like that. I'm like, I want to do this one scene. There, there's that one scene, and 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 it's and it's great. And we and we need that footage. <laughs> you know, it's you always think in, in terms of that. But um, it, it's been an incredible relationship. She and I are joined at the hip, and it's it's those kind of relationships are just so few and far between in, in the business we're in because well, especially for her to know your family and to, oh my god and I mean, to know your your history and I was thinking do I know anyone who knew me when I was 15 I don't think so I mean we, we've been through everything together and it's it really is it really is a, a marriage in a way yeah yeah and, so uh, what has she what has she brought to you that you were like oh do you really think so and you and that you did and and, and we're happy that you did you know, a, a lot of the time, you know, your agency, I'm, I'm with Gersh and the agency mm -hmm. will just set up an audition for me or set up some kind of read or it's time you should put yourself on tape for this, this, that and the other. And they'll send it to me. And, um, and I, uh, you know, it, it, it's like, oh, I, I, uh, you know, I don't know if you should do it because it's, it's, it's just, you know, there it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, this long in New Mexico and you're going to be away from your kid and this, that, and the other. And I'm, I'm just like, Oh, he, he's, he's in the first grade and, and he he's in school right now. He'll understand. Let me read this. And it'll be fine. 
but um, you know, to consider now I have a six year old child and, you know, and a husband and a life in Los Angeles. So mm-hmm. every time I tell her, I want to go, I want to do Broadway. I want to go back to New York. She was just like, okay, well, it, we've got to be really picky because that's a lot of time away from your family. Right, right, right. And it takes up so much of your mental, you know, um, energy and, 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 and physical energy mm-hmm. as well. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's such a different lifestyle. Right, right. The, the theater. I mean, waking up at yeah. two o'clock in the afternoon, rolling out of bed, going to the theater, giving everything, and then everything going back every home. day. And I'll sit in the audience sometimes, and I will think, not only how can they do this once, how can they do this Over. every single day and twice on Saturday, and you yeah. know, and just it's uh, that that the physicality of live theater is amazing when you sit and think about it sure absolutely yeah you know it's and and it's very interesting because um uh, when i when i worked on meet the fockers dustin hoffman who comes from the theater Mm -hmm. has a very different way of of um you know working on set than robert de niro does who robert de niro is pure he's film he is 100 percent film and Robert De Niro, if he if he doesn't feel like he got it the first time, he'll just repeat the line and repeat the line until he gets it right. And then Dustin will do it once. And if he Fs up, he'll be like, oh, my God, no. <laughs> and then, oh, I have to remind myself I could do it over again. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's 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 really interesting having to, you know, having to. to it, it's a different stamina on set because you have to do it 17 times right. over and over, you know, in a row it, from different shot angles uh-huh. that, it, that takes a certain kind of stamina versus, you know, just doing it one time. And if you F up, you got to keep on going. Cause that right, audience is right. waiting. And They're just the watching. Doesn't know. The, audi- yeah, the audience doesn't know. Um, and what about, what about singing? Do you enjoy singing? I absolutely love singing. Yeah, I your love husband's a composer, so right? Much. He is. Yes. Yeah. So yes, you have a very, do you have a very musical, uh, a musical household? He put a piano to guitar in my kid's hands when he was three years old. That kid is playing piano every night, and 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 guitar every night. And my my uh, husband is right there. I'm like, you've turned into a tiger mom. He's like, I know, <laughs> I know, but. You know, he's just like, but don't worry, it's good for math too. It's it, it's great, don't worry. <laughs> but it's I'm like, he should be in bed. It's nine o'clock, and he was just like, no, 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 no we still have to finish this one riff. But um, it, it's it, it really is, uh, um, it's 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 a, uh, it, it's really wonderful that that he's it's, you know, the musicality sort of blends into you know, just our our, our conversations and his sense of humor and and timing, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it really, I, I, um, I, I see a lot of actors with, with musicians, with, with, with the, you know, and people do you that want to really sing more music. in, in your, in parts that you get, do you look for that? Oh, I, I, I mean, I, I look for, you know, if, if it's, if it's in the, the, the film, if it's in the play, if it's uh-huh. in the musical, absolutely, absolutely. 100%, 100%. I, I just game for anything, honestly, <laughs> to a fault. And you have, um, how, how has, um, Ted been, um, oh. with, you know, the series coming out, obviously huge, huge fanfare and so much excitement. And it's, it's such a, uh, maybe that's one your dad wouldn't have let you rent when you were nine, Ted. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it's, uh, fun. Oh, my dad would have loved that, that, that dirty <laughs> bear. He would have gone crazy for that dirty bear. I, you know, I had no idea how big Ted was in Latin America. Latin oh, America no. is crazy for the Osito. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I was really excited to learn that um, and, and, and that they really love it there. Um, but I, it's, it, it's so fun. It's just my kind of humor. And oh my gosh, we had a good time filming that. It, it's just so much fun. The writers, Seth, he's such a sweetheart. And right. he directed every single show. Um, the bear was not with us. It was just this stand with two eyeballs, right, for our <laughs> eye lines. And, uh, and they put Seth in another room where he would be filmed. 
they would film all of his, you know, gesticulations and his uh-huh. moaning, and they'd have all these little sensors, you know, on him to pick that up and then superimpose it under the bear and with computer Isn't graphics. Crazy? I don't know how it's yeah. done. So I've, seen, I've seen it on Planet of the Apes, and I've seen it on, I think I might have seen something on Ted. That's, Isn't it's that just a crazy else? process. Oh my gosh. It's so, oh. it, it, it's so technical. But it's funny, we, we would be, you know, the bear is across from me. We're eating. Uh-huh. Ted is right across from me. And then I'd hear Seth's, you know, saying the dialogue from, you know, the other room. And I'd be, you know, all of us would want to turn and <laughs> talk. Oh, wait, 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 sorry. We got to do that again. You're, he's, he, he's here. You're there. Wait, wait, wait okay. But, um, but yeah, that, that, that took some getting used to. Do you... Um... Was it in Was it in L. A. Was it a series at Universal Studios? Oh, right at the. Is that cool? Okay. Yeah, okay. it was at Universal okay. Studios. I've never worked at. Well, no, for me, the Fockers, I worked at Universal Studios. That was ages ago, but um, this that was like over twenty years ago. But this was filmed at um, yeah the stage at, at a soundstage at Universal Studios, and I would you know I had my my little card, my membership card to to obviously you know let myself in and, and uh-huh. park. And sometimes after school, I take my kid and we go, you know, behind the, 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 the jaws ride. Right. right? We, we'd be, you know, we'd, we'd see it from, from another angle and we just sort of hide and then watch that, <laughs> that, you know, the trams come and, oh, he was so jazzed to be, oh, to, to, to be able to do that. I, was like, it, I don't know um, if this is going to go past one ju- season. Is so we might as well get it doing a, doing a series like, I mean, cause you've been on girlfriend's guide and some different series, but doing the series versus the, versus the, the film versus a film. Do you, do you prefer one over the other as far as the process and your, you know, like you said, with your family and taking time? And- well, it, it's, it's a dream job come true. It was a dream job come true. It was probably one of the most amazing um, shows I've ever worked on uh, because uh first of all, I was 10 minutes away from, uh, from oh, home. Nice. And we, we always finished in time for me to go home and have dinner with my family. I mean, it, they were, they were really, really easy hours. Oh, and wow. that is I nice. mean, yeah, we weren't waking up at five or six o'clock in the morning with the chickens, um, <laughs> you know, getting, you know, your hair and make, getting processed. It was, um, you know, they were really, really decent hours. Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce was shot in Vancouver. Now that was fun. Oh, okay. okay. Shooting in Canada. Oh boy. Yeah. That that was a blast. That's a great, I mean, that is like mini LA, right? Mini, it was, mini, it yeah, is mini, mini LA. Old, clean LA up there in Vancouver. Oh, so much God. is going it's on up there. So, so clean. I know a lot of you don't have a lot of time to, because you're working all the time, which is so fantastic. What, Tell us, we love to hear like what, what you are consuming. Do you love, you know, what you're reading, what you're watching? What do you guys like to sit down and, and binge when, uh, when you have, when you have free time, what are you looking at? Well, I did not finish college. And so I'm a little, I'm I'm actually very insecure about that. And there is something that I have fallen in love with. I'm looking on my phone right now. So I can tell you exactly what it is. Oh, you guys, it's so cool. It's called Blinklist. 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 Okay. Blinklist. Writing this down. And basically, you know, it it, it is, how can I explain Blinklist? You, You get to... You, you're you're basically, um, it's it's. I mean, it's 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 a very sophisticated, um, cliff notes of oh. every classic okay. of every and 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 really, but but um, you know, very many different perspectives on 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 um, on classic novels mm-hmm. and and um, and biographies and autobiographies and and really great even like podcasts but just snippets so if you have add like me you will love blinklist i just i absolutely adore blinklist and bad sisters was a show that i i think i i watched in like two days i thought that was the most phenomenal cast and lo and behold bono's kid is an actress right all and she's so great. Johnny Depp's kid and oh, all of those kids. I know. And, and they're so good. Right? Right? They're really great. It's, you know, I, I, obviously they have, you know, access to, to you know, 
you know, two geniuses ra raising them. Like, I, I mean, um, Hawk, Maya Hawk. To yes. me. I'm like, who is this? Right. She's so wonderful. Um, I'm such a fan. And I, I, I think it's really, it's, it's just really interesting, this new generation of I know, this of, summer of when the whole, you know, that almost trying to make it negative, the like Nepo baby and these different actors, I'm like, why is this a bad thing? Yeah. When, you know, when we're seeing Maya Hawk and we're seeing, um, um, oh my gosh, there was somebody, oh, wait, you have somebody. Maude Apatow. Ma, yeah, Maude Apatow. Maude Apatow, yes. who is, I mean, she, she's just one of the, one of the most down to earth, kindest, so hyper intelligent. Uh, one of those hyper intelligent yeah. uh, kids yeah. her age I've I've ever met. I mean, well, Sydney Sweetie is I mean just a force, but the two of them hanging out with them all day long. Oh my god, I had so much how much so fun much joy is, hanging is out. That with those and are girls. you loving that Jacob Alordi? I mean, everything he's getting right now. <laughs> he's, he's, oh my gosh. He's, he's such a sweetheart. What just it couldn't have happened to a sweeter, kinder soul. He's such a he's a gentle giant. <laughs> I love that. He I really is that. sweet. Those they're all, that, they're all lovely. Those kids. yeah, that whole set has to just be yeah. So in awe of each other, all of they're, you, them looking up to you, you looking at them. I mean, it has to just be in awe of everyone. It's and they are so tight. They're very very close, and I think it's because they had that meteoric rise to fame all at right. the same time, right? right? So it's like they they all just clung to each other during that, right? And it's it, it's got to be yeah. a little scary. Knowing they're good I people. Can imagine. Oh, they're yeah. such good people. Super, yeah. super cool. Yeah, yeah behind Lovely. that, especially when it's got to be a uh, tough subject matters day after day after day. Sure. Oh no, you got to keep it light. You right. Keep it, light on this <laughs> it. it was. I, I had heard that. Oh, it's a you know, it's a toxic work environment and stuff. I was like, who made that up? That's so weird. No, it's not. I I've, I've had a blast on it. What are you talking oh, my about? Gosh, it's I love that. So what, what can, we're almost out of time, but what can you share with us? Um, what's coming next? What, oh, gosh. I know you have some secrets, but what can, what can you share with us that's coming well, next? Well, you know, it, it's, it, it's funny. There is, um, there are a couple of things right now. I'm, I'm out here. I'm in Alicante and I was in London and then I'll be going to Vegas. Um, and it's something that I can't talk about. I, okay. I signed an NDA, <laughs> but it's so much fun. I'm oh, having good. a blast out here. Boy. Oh, it's, it's, and, and, uh, what, and right now I, I, I believe there is, there is something, uh, an animated project that's coming up and I still can't talk about that either, but, um, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping, you know, the, the, uh, you know, Ted is, is really, um, yeah. it's, it's become like such a big hit and uh -huh. we're all, oh, what it was the most down, the most, uh, streamed show in in peacock history so we're hoping to go for a season two i'm hoping fingers crossed and that we'll be starting that right away so we'll oh, see good. yeah Exciting. okay so we're You'll gonna be watch the first to know. we're gonna watch for animated secret Something we're gonna watch animated. this film absolutely what you're writing directing producing that you can't talk about well, we'll... It, it, it's it's something that that I've, I've i've been creating and it's okay, it's good. uh yeah and it's uh uh latin themed is is what i could okay. say and it's uh it's 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 what i grew up around and All right. uh so it's, well, it's thank it's you so much for fun. being with this has been thank so you, much Gretchen. fun oh my gosh and getting Such to a pleasure. know you and putting your your i just your voice and your personality. I'm like all of these, like sister act and, 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 <laughs> yeah. and legally blonde and all of these, all of these characters are, uh, are floating through my head. I love that. Cause I can it, see it, just, I can see and hear pieces of them in you. That's so much yeah, fun. I, 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 and it's, it's, you know, you've been doing this for such a long time when you run into people or you say, Oh my God, there's Lauren Hill again. And there's, you know, Jennifer Love Hewitt. We're still, we, you know, we've survived. <laughs> we're, we're, we, we're, we're, you know, we're still in the game. Yeah, and it's, yeah, uh, no, and, it and is. It's, it sounds like really we're going to see a lot of you coming up. We're going to be looking. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you hopefully. for joining us today and have a Thank wonderful, so wonderful, I know you're working, but hopefully you're having yeah. a wonderful trip as well. Thank you, Gretchen. Thank okay. you so much. All right. All right take take care. care. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe and leave a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. 
To stay up to date with In Her Words, join the conversation by following Women in Entertainment on our social channels and subscribe to our weekly newsletter at womeninentertainment.com.